So here's the sketch for today's watercolour demonstration. Yes, I've sketched it in for you. Now, if you want to do a screen grab of this, you can use your phones to do a screen grab or whatever you want to do. What well, we're going to do something different. We're going to talk about animals. Why are we talking about animals? Well, coming up very, very soon. I've got a brand new book that is being launched. Um, it's being launched in the um, it's being launched in the spring, so May June time. I'll pop that just there. And what I'll do is I'll move the sketch to one side so you can see. So to celebrate the launch of this brand new book, Watercolour Animals for the Absolute Beginner with Matthew Palmer, I want to talk about animals today, painting animals. This is the sketch. Do get it sketched in. Um, it's nice to put all the lines and things on, but we'll not quite... You know, you've not got to do every single line. This will happen. It'll be a lovely one to do. So do take a screen grab, whatever you want to do, and get your um, get your piece of paper ready. Remember, you can watch this back at any time. So we're going to get started. We're going to get started. Quick look at the palette. I kind of mention colours as we go through. I think that's normally the best plan of action when it comes to the old. When it comes to the old palette, I think personally it's better just to sort of do it as live and then you can mention the colours we can mention the colours at a later stage okay I hope that makes sense so I've got a big brush here Matthew Palmer super point brush which is about a 20 we're going to start off by wetting the old paper I'm also going to pop something under the head of the board here as well I'm going to pop this masking tape roll just under the top of the board and literally what I'm going to do is I'm going to wet the paper Top to bottom with a big brush, we're going to get a lovely background on here. Now, if you're trying to paint along with this, I just at the back of your mind, think to yourself, it is a watercolour uh, demo, so it's going to go on pretty quickly. Workshops that we were talking about, virtual workshops that you've heard me talk about, are much more steady, giving you time going through the sketch with you, breaking it all down. This is a demo. So let's have a couple of good coats of water. We'll shake any drips off. Give it a shake. Shake the drips off like the fellas do. The men do that better than the women. I don't know why. More practice, maybe? Possibly. Pop that to one side. Then what we'll do is we'll grab the old uh, size 10 brush. Yes, we've got the old size 10 brush right here. And uh, I want to put some colours in the background. Though. I want an explosion of colour. I want an explosion of colour in the background. So really any colours could go. If I'm being honest, you could do this entire demo with just your primary colours, red, yellow, blue. But we're going to use a bit more than that. Um, I want some colours in the background. So I want to go for, I think, some natural orange. You can mix an orange from primary colours. I've got a size 10 brush or a Matthew Palmer medium super point. Beautiful brush, beautiful. Bit of a tap on tissue there. So we've got that. And then back to the picture, I'm just going to pop in some sort of background. I'm just going to let the colour just, just sort of explode into the, into the background here. Just a little bit of a, because it's going to be quite a monochrome picture without this. So with it being a zebra or zebra. Now I want to use that natural orange as well. And I want to drop it in the snout, the mouth area. There's a bit of warmth in there, so I'll get that in there. Beautiful. We can do this while the picture's wet. Look how nice that goes in. It's nice to do it at this point because the paint spreads and all softens in and becomes lovely. We'll also get a little bit of this in the mane as well and a bit in the ears. Just a little occasional little bit of warmth as though it, the zebra is catching the sunlight, uh, which is a good thing to do. It's a good thing to do, so I'll pop that in there. Beautiful. So that's natural orange. Back to the palette there. Take a little bit more orange, possibly. Back to this. Get a little bit in these corners. Perfect. Can't go wrong with that, can you? Now let's put some of the colours in the background then. We'll clean the brush. Now I'm going to use some natural brown. It's just here. Now, you can mix a brown from mixing an orange and then popping a dot of blue. But I've got my own brown here called natural brown, which is a lovely natural sort of colour. Tap it on a bit of kitchen paper is always a sensible thing to do before you apply it to the paper. And the plan of action here is to literally just sort of pop a little bit of warm colours in the background. 
just say there's a bit of something happening pop some in the main pop some around the mouth area let the paint spread let it become part of the background and then i just keep picking a bit extra giving it a tap on tissue and just give it a bit of a soften pop a little bit in the the main as well you can do that perfect so it's going to be very much a portrait that we're going to do today so do stick with us can't go wrong with that beautiful okay great so we'll jump back to the palette then and i want to be using a smaller brush now so i'm going to be going for a lot more detail a lot more detail now I'm starting to put some of the darkness in so I've, I've got a smaller brush as well here so we're going to use some natural gray and i'll mix it over the top of the brown now natural gray is a lovely primary color gray beautiful vibrant rich gray gorgeous for for this kind of work you can, it's made from a red, yellow and blue pigment, so you can mix your own version from blue and red to make purple, put yellow in. But it's such a common colour that we use it literally in every single picture. So it makes perfect sense to me to have um, this colour at hand, which is why it's the most popular colour that we do. And it's all available on the old website. Check it out. So I'm just going to rotate the brush through the tissue there. So this is a size 6 or a small super point. I'm going to start to put some darkness into this, put some shadows into place as well. It'll really work well here. So let's start to work on that then. And what we'll do is we'll start to work around the mouth area. We are going to go dark here. Don't be afraid of it. Now, yes, the paper's damp. But that's not a problem. If your paint's thick enough, if your paint's thick enough, you can control it quite easily but keep rotating the board as I do this good strong bit of color work up the edge wiping on the tissue gives you control over the way that the paint goes on we'll come around that snout area and you'll notice that the edges are a bit soft it's all part of the watercolor charm so don't worry about that we'll bring this up again you can get that sketching before so it's going to be like a sort of zebra against a warm evening sort of sky i think would work quite nicely turn that the right way you can see how that started to go dark but it's not going to be really dark until a little bit later we'll just come back a little bit with the camera there perfect and then again we'll go for some more of that gray and i want to put some shadows in place now so i want to go dark inside the ears here okay ears be careful to make it look like a burnt ear that reminds me of a joke actually there's this guy in hospital and he's got two burnt ears it's not a true story so don't worry He's got two burnt ears and uh, when the doctor comes to see him, he says, uh, can I ask, why have you got two burnt ears? And he says, um, well, I was doing the ironing and the phone rang. And he says, well, I, you know, I, how come you've got the other ear is burnt. I said, well, when I, uh, when I put the phone down, the room might you say, shh, it's bad, isn't it? It's bad. I apologise if you're offended by the burnt ear joke. Clean the brush on the tissue and we'll give it a softening. Blend it into the shape of the animal. So just while things are damp, just starting to add that little bit of tonal work. So all we're doing i want some shadows underneath the neck here with this gray so we'll go under the neck under the jaw under the chin under the head whatever you want to call it straight down there clean the brush couple of taps we just lost 15 viewers with that joke didn't we oh well 
Never mind. And then I want to go down the edge here as well. Just a little bit of tonal work, just coming all the way down there. We're starting to pull the shapes out, that's what we're doing. Clean brush on the tissue. And then we'll just get water and literally we're going to soften all this in. We're just going to use water and we're going to soften it all and it needs blending in. Really important that we do this. The mane could be a little bit darker as well across the top there. I mean it's really dark up there but that's something we'll get to later. But what we're going to do here is we're actually going to go for the... We're going to go for the main at the top there so we'll turn that round again we'll just go for the same grey it's going to go along that edge starting to dry but not quite dry enough to work on and then water just to blend that up and then you can see how we're starting to pick out those sort of key areas of the picture here I also want to do a similar thing from the top as well, from a little, you see I've got those sort of zigzaggy lines coming in there, so we'll go down with that. It's all about picking the shape out at this stage. That sort of all disappears off into the vinaigrette, and the vignette, clean the brush, get your water, and do the same from here as well. Bring that down. Again, we'll get the water just to smooth that across. So we're starting to look at this and picking out sort of key areas of darkness, all using that gray color that you've actually got here. It's still, it's the same one that we started with and it's very simple thing to do really. Um, nice and easy way of blending your colors together, picking out shape. I want to put a shadow down here underneath the, the jaw. So I'm spending time with natural grey and putting shadows in before we go really dark and put all the lovely bits of detail in. So I'm just using water just to blend it in, basically. Perfect. So that's looking good. Just a little bit of darkness under the eye I think would be useful here as well. So if we just go dark underneath there and slightly above as well. I'll put like a bit of a C shape around the back of the eye there. Clean the brush on the tissue. Looking like a unicorn at the minute. Get a bit of water on, give it a soften, can't go wrong. Perfect. Just want to go a little bit, a little bit dark around there as well. Looking nice. So, so this is a brand new picture. This is not actually in the um, the book that's coming out in um, sort of May, June of 2020. It's just here, the book, uh, 2024. So it's not actually in that book. This is, uh, this is a totally brand new book here. We will be doing pre-orders on Watercolour TV very soon. So you'll be able to get hold of a copy of this if you are on watercolor tv you'll be able to pick up a signed first edition of it which is going to be really good so keep a close eye there's only 250 of those i think this time that's how that's looking now that needs a little bit of time to dry so i've got i've got a heat gun or a hair dryer i'm going to give it a good blast then i'm going to start to put all the beautiful detail markings do stick around for the end so while that's drying off i'll be back in a moment a big thank you to today's video sponsor which is connectbarber.co.uk make sure you check out the link below for a £60 credit, yes, the link below will take you to the website where you can get £60 credits against your broadband. Amazing, eh? It really, really helps this channel too. Have a look or check them out at connectfiber.co.uk. If you're looking for a broadband provider who offers both speed and reliability, look no further than Connect Fiber, a leading provider of full fiber broadband who specialise in faster, fairer and flawless internet connections. Unlike some providers who are raising their prices by as much as 7.9% in April, Connect Fiber don't do annual price hikes and never raise the price in contract. Order one of their packages before the 1st of April to make sure you get an amazing price for the duration of your contract.
With Connect Fiber, there are four great packages to choose from. If you're after the ultimate in hyperfast broadband, the one that I use for doing these live streams and for uploading, it is a life-changing package. The hypersonic package is called, and it gives you up to 1,000 megabits per second. It is superb. I recommend it to anybody. And it's all at an affordable price as well, ensuring streamless streaming and ultra-fast upload and download speeds. There's also Connect Fiber TV service, which can be added to the hypersonic package. The TV features hours of video on-demand streaming services, as well as TV, this phone and mesh service too, spreading the internet throughout your property. The service is currently available in my hometown of Bolsover and other parts of Derbyshire, Cambridgeshire, Essex, Nottinghamshire and Yorkshire, of course, here in the UK. Connect Fiber, faster, fairer and flawless internet. Check out their website, connectfiber.co.uk for availability in your area and for more information. And do make sure you click the link below in the description for this video because it will give you £60 credit and really help this channel. Big thumbs up and a big thank you to Connect Fiber. Let's crack on. Yes, we're all nice and dry there, folks. We can see that down here. It's all nice and dry. Ready to start to bring in all that beautiful detail. Let's get a bit closer in, shall we? We'll zoom in a bit closer here so we can see what we've got. Now, if you've just joined in and um, just make sure things are really nice and dry, but we're going to start to cram in all that lovely, glorious detail. That's where things get really quite important here. So detail is king at this particular point. Um, what I'm going to be doing is using uh, natural grey which is here, Matthew Palmer Natural Grey, and using it quite strong with a size 6 brush. Now all the lovely detail is going to come in this, the eye detail, all that. Notice I'm rotating the brush over the edge of the palette there. Um, that's quite important to do that. And let's go for some of this lovely detail. We'll start off with the mouth, actually. In fact, we can get a little bit closer into this, can't we? We can do that. We are live, so we can. there's going to be a bit of... Um, bit of a live broadcast kind of thing so there's no editing as such here but we're going to go for the nostrils and all that lovely detail that comes around and of course there's two of those that one comes around there we'll soften those in in a second we're also going to go for the for the mouth, which of course is very, very important here. Give this guy some character. Is it going to be a happy zebra or a sad zebra? So we can see we've popped those shadows in there. Nice clean brush at this point on the tissue a few times. And then just use a bit of water just to encourage that to slightly slightly soften blend it in and then also blend the mouth shadow down because we're working on dry paper now we've got bags of time to work on this we're going to pop a a shadow around the back here of the mouth just bringing it i'm using a size six or a, a small super point here we're also going to work around the back of that nostril as well with the dark so you get that nice sort of curve coming in turn that round work up the edge a little bit just a touch not too much because it's really dark around the mouth area it's quite dark on a on a zebra so we need to maintain that i also want to go really quite dark along this top edge here. Clean brush, a couple of quick taps on the old tissue and then we'll come back to those first ones and we'll blend them in. We'll work them in, soften them in. This is the way that you build up animals uh, using, using shadows and highlights are to come later. We'll get to highlights a bit later but the more little bits of grey you can put in the more little bits of detail you can bring in here, the better this is going to be. Starting to bring some of the sort of stripe detail into the nose and mouth area as well. There's almost little lines that start to come down. You can see how they sort of follow the shape. Clean brush. And just feather those into the, into the picture there. 
Perfect. Don't be afraid to go really dark in that mouth, you know, get that sort of open effect. Really strong, really deep, really nice, rich, vibrant sort of colours. That's your secret to this, really. And don't be afraid to maintain that sort of rich vibrancy as well, because uh, without that, it doesn't really work too well. Perfect. Lovely. Okay, let's start to put some of the detail up at the top now. So we'll come up to those ears, the two birds' ears. And uh, we've got a lovely clean line that goes up from that edge and also up the back of that mane as well. That's quite important to get that in there. Size 6 brush is ideal for this with a bit of natural grey. So it comes all the way around the ear. We'll jump over to the other side as well and we'll do that same outline. So it's kind of going over the shadows that you've already put on. In the brush, give it a few taps on the old tissue there. And then we'll soften these in. We're going to gently feather them in to the picture, make them part of the painting, start to blend them in. It is going to go much darker. Let's come back a little bit with the camera so you can see the whole section here. There's a lovely dark piece inside here which is like almost like a little, it's the internal part of the ear. It's almost like done in zigzags, it's almost like little Little diagonal lines to make it look as though it's working against the fur over here as well. Little diagonal lines. Perfect. And brush that down into the into the head. Now, right in the middle here, you've got like a lovely big chunk of hair that comes in which we need to bring in um so we'll come back with the camera jump over to the palette and i want to be quite vivid with the gray there we go but i want to introduce a little bit of natural brown into that as well but i'll make the color slightly warm you might not see much of a difference if i'm being honest you might not see barely any difference but there is a little change in color there just a touch Okay, just a tiny little change in colour. But strong grey, a little bit of natural brown, working together. And uh, yeah, we'll start to pull some of those important areas into the picture now. Still working with your number six brush. So we'll bring that down. And we'll start to put some little, little flicks. Let's get a bit closer in, shall we, to that so you can see the little flicks here. So we'll put little... Little flicks and dabs on. Working up at the back. Coming down. Right down the centre. It sort of disappears down the centre. Looking forward to getting some highlights in this, by the way. That's going to really change the whole, the whole thing's going to look way different when you put the beautiful highlights in. We're going to put some little, using the brush like a pen, hold it like a pen as well. Put some little bits of, little bits of individual hairs that are just poking out that part of the mane. So you can see that kind of hair effect coming in there. Beautiful. I'll also do a little bit of that colour, I think, inside the inside the ears as well. That's a lovely, gorgeous, dark colour. I like that colour. So I'm just going to skim around some of the edges of the of the mane there, which works really well. And down at the bottom here, that same dark, you can see the colours in the palette. It's the really, really deep colour, that little bit of brown just makes it that little bit stronger. And I'm just going to go in and pop a little bit of that inside the nose 
because it'll really beef it up. If we start thinking of dry brush, which is where you pick the paint up and sort of tap it on a bit of kitchen paper, so you've got a slightly dry brush, make the brush go a bit flat as well. Can you see it's gone a bit sort of flat there? So let's squash the brush a little bit flat and you can start to pull some of that into the into this area here, get some texture coming in. So you can really start to make use of your watercolour paper because that's what we need to do in watercolours. And you can sort of skim this over the top of the, the um, body, the head of the zebra, even around the underneath of those eyes, around the top as well. You start to get a little bit of surface texture here, which is lovely. This is all before we put the stripes in, of course, the famous stripes. That would work really well on the mane as well, that colour, because it's a, for me it's a slightly warmer colour. What I'm going to do, actually, to make this process a bit easier, is I'm going to use a bit of masking tape here. I'm going to pop the masking tape along the edge of the mane. Do make sure that you've uh, removed your stickiness from it and carefully paint it the back of the ear because what you get is you get some dark stripes and some light stripes on the main so this darkness this is the brown and grey mix we'll go first and then we'll go for the white we'll leave a gap and then we'll go for the light stripe and get a few individuals put a few smaller flicks because I think that the darker that you go with this main the better in my opinion So a few dark flicks all the way, but having the masking tape there makes the process a bit easier, you see. So a few little flicks just going up. See those definite stripes coming in, can't you? But because we're so close in, you can really see how we've utilised the texture of the the paper here. Because this is a not surface paper, which means it's not rough and not smooth. It's somewhere in the middle, which is a lovely way of uh, working. Now, if we very carefully take the tape off, look how easy that goes in. And you've got that instant sort of main. It's just an easy way to do it. I'm going to use that same colour to get right into the right into those ears there, that browny tinge is lovely. All this will get complemented with, with the light. But if we take a look back, if we come back nice and steady there, I'm doing this manually as I mentioned the zoom in, so you can see how things are starting to shape up. But I think we're ready to put the, the eye on and then of course the stripes. So if we get to the palette, um, the eye wants to be painted with a bit of a warm, almost an orange colour, so we use natural orange in the actual um, picture, so we'll use natural orange again. Um, and what I want to do is use natural orange and some natural grey as well, which I'll add later on. But as a starting point, I just want to bring in some natural orange into the eye, a bit of water, just water, just a bit of tissue just to soften it in. There you go. So that's giving that bit of colour. While that's a little bit damp, I'd recommend grabbing some grey, quite strong. There's the grey. And with the grey, I'm going to turn this on the side. And I want to go underneath that eyelid to get a shadow in. Like so. And then coming around. For the internal sort of pupil if you like
Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to clean the brush really, really well. Wipe it on tissue a few times. And let's give this a bit of a soften. Let's give it a bit of a blend. Give it a bit of a blend. Now, just while that's that needs a little moment to dry. So while that is having a moment to dry, folks, let me talk to you directly because let's talk a little bit about <clears throat> a couple of things. First of all, if you're watching this on YouTube, please do subscribe to the channel. It makes a big difference for the algorithm. Leave a comment, subscribe, etc. Brilliant. But let's mention again, while this, while this is having a moment to dry, let's mention again, it looks nice and vivid on that camera, don't it? Let's mention the new YouTube channel that's coming up, the second YouTube channel that's going to run parallel to this. This will always be the main one. The second channel is going to be for hints and tips, live streaming, art news, etc. It needs, we need to get 1,000 subscribers before we can start doing live streaming, etc. So I've popped a link in the description below. Please do subscribe to that channel. There's nothing on there at the minute. Once we get to that thousand, we'll start adding lots and lots and lots and lots of content. Um, so do please subscribe to the channel. I'd love you to. Again, I've popped a link. It's a secondary channel. It's just Matthew Palmer. Uh, it's going to run parallel to this one, which will always be the main one for doing all the demos and sort of reviews and things. So do make sure it, um, it's been subscribed to. So thank you. And secondly, while this is having a moment to dry, um, we have watercolour TV to talk about. Watercolour TV, which is absolutely amazing, folks. Do check out watercolour TV. Watercolour TV is my watercolour video on demand. This is the place for exclusive watercolour lessons um, that are only available to members of watercolour TV. There is thousands of hours, over 400 videos on there. There's 15 years worth of content on Watercolour TV. You've got to be a member to access these videos. These are very detailed step-by-step -step workshops. There's a little one here of the Northern Lights. So do check it out. Uh, check out a 30-day free trial to Watercolour TV. All you need to do is click on the links in the description below to access all of that. If we go to the membership page here, you can see there's different levels of membership. There's monthly, annual, lifetime. Big shout out to lifetime members. And there's also a gift membership should you like to purchase it for somebody that is a somebody's birthday or Christmas or Valentine's or whatever time of day you're watching this. So do check it out. <clears throat> and finally, we've got a live virtual watercolour workshop coming up, which is taking place on Sunday the 25th of February 2024, Paint the Norwegian Fjords, a live virtual watercolour workshop in beautiful step-by-step -step detail. Here was last week's uh, workshop. Let me show you it here. I'm going to pop it on the screen for you now. And this one was the Red Arrows all painted in lovely step-by-step -step detail, guiding you through the sketch, checking the sketch, a lovely way to learn watercolours, a £10 workshop. Check it out, folks. Check it out. Back to this. It's all nice and dry. As soon as the eye goes in, you get character, don't you? You get that little bit of character. Let's get a little bit closer in, because what I want to do here is I want to pop a little bit. You're going to see a, a smidge, a smidgen, of an eye on the other side so just sort of down here you're going to see a little bit of a dark almost like a little bit of a bulbous kind of thing happening there and at the same time we can darken around the the eyeball as it were now i shall be popping in some some highlights on this so don't worry just a damp brush just to encourage any hard lines to fade in. But that's looking really nice. What we're going to do now, folks, is start to bring in some of the little bits of uh, markings. And for that, I mean, really, it's just a case of using natural um, natural grey. And if you look close here, you can see how it's already taking shape. It just needs that little bit of extra. So um, working with natural grey, we've got the palette all keyed up here, ready to go. Natural grey. 
straight from the tube, beautiful colour, can't go wrong with that. And uh, we'll go for that lovely darkness that is natural grey. I think a little touch of brown in there would help, to be honest. But we're going to paint in some stripes. Yes, we are. We're going to get a bit stripy here. Um, and really, we can pop these in pretty quickly, I think. There's nothing too exciting about these. But what I'm looking forward to with this is putting in the lovely, the lovely highlights. They always make such a difference, you know. When you do paint the stripes in, it does help to sketch them in. And again, the pencil sketch, um, I can pop that on screen for you again. There's the pencil sketch. And you can see how I've actually sketched in the actual um, stripes beforehand because I wanted to make sure that I got them pretty accurately. Um, the main thing I'm sort of doing here is I'm following the contour of the zebra. So imagine where you've got the shape coming through. That's kind of the main sort of key here. That's what we're trying to do. Um, so it's well worth making sure that you do take your time with these, um, these stripes here. Now, some of the ones towards the back start to get quite wide. And because we're doing this in a vignette style, they're going to fade away. So I'm not going to paint every single one as we get lower down. So you can see how this is really shaping up well. Bring it down. Going under the neck. And I'm just going to slightly rotate that on the side, just a touch, because I just want to bring one coming up, a couple coming up from there, which are literally just going to fade into the they're going to fade into the mist. You could use a bit of water here and uh, just add a little bit of dampness onto your brush and just give it a bit of a, a soften there. So there's nothing saying that you can't just sort of glaze over a damp brush here, which is what I'm doing here. And that'll calm down the stripes. It'll also at the same time put a bit of shadow in. Can you see it's put a bit of shadow here and there? That's just water, like on this back edge here of the neck. Clean the brush on the tissue and just use a bit of water just to give it a bit of a soften. And what that'll do is it'll kind of make it look more round, give it more shape, etc. etc. Let's obviously continue this on the face here. So we've got the grey um, there. Pretty sharp brush. Touch of brown just to help the colour go a little bit deeper, which is lovely. And then on the tissue again, we can really put some lovely work into this. So we'll come down from the ear. And then we'll get the stripes in. You can be as precise as you want, I suppose, here. For doing these. But it's this that's going to make this guy, same guy, I've got no idea, um, but come alive, right? And some of these stripes are nice and nice and wide as you get more towards that focal point which of course is the eye nose mouth and just head area you would be a little bit more precise about how you paint them in so you can afford to be a little bit more precise about them again we'll do some softening we'll do some blending like a thin one just creeps in the middle there. Perfect. This is going to make such a difference, yeah? Spending time using that colour, using that dark colour, getting that detail in. Nice and close in now so we can see. Look how these ones follow the contour of the, the eye there. And it comes down into the nose, look. So 
starting to work down. These ones kind of blend in. These ones sort of become part of the darkness on the... So you sort of flick your brush down here to help those ones to blend in. And that's really what you want to be doing. They get quite stylized on the head. Now, there's almost like a centre parting. But again, you can see how they're blending in. Sort of flick them down. There's almost a line that runs down the centre of the hair. Now, I'm just going to put a bit of darkness up there, just a bit of grey, just to help that a bit darker. But there's almost a line that comes down the middle. And if I turn this on the side, that's where we're going to change direction. So we've rotated things around a little bit. Looks quite mean, this uh, zebra, don't you? Like he's had a bad day. But you can almost, almost see where it's sort of... There's almost like a line that sort of runs almost straight down that that sort of bridge, you know, straight down from the top there. This colour, this this kind of grey colour is lovely for doing this. It really works well. I want to pick up some of that. And I just want to make sure that the mane has got the grey at the bottom there so it really stands up again in the hair inside the ears. You can just titivate a little bit, make sure you've got that darkness in the mouth, clean edge really taking shape stick with us because highlights are going to come and they always make such a big big difference don't they let's just come out a little bit with the camera here so you can see the whole thing looking good we'll come down nice and thin from the back of the eye nice and wide there's one here And I'll sort of come over here. Again, they run down that nose and they sort of fade in. Can't go wrong, really. They almost connect. As they come down that bridge of the nose, right from underneath that eye. There's one that goes right down the eye. Continues down. I love the fact we've put the colours at the back. It just makes it more interesting. These ones get quite wide down here. Just nicely curl around towards the nose. Pretty. That should have been to dark. So what a difference that's made. Now I'm just going to spend a moment with the brush here, just sort of tweaking any bits. I want to darken that little bit of the eye, just on the corner of the eye there. Um, make sure the hair is nice and dark at the back of those ears. Get a few little final flicks in the mane. Let's just turn this over one second while we do that. Get a few individual flyaway hairs. Nice, love the character, dark in the nostril. So this is that this is that exact same colour, that exact same colour, that same grey. Um, but if I clean the brush really well, just give it a bit of a wipe on tissue, so you've got that damp brush, and you can now have that little bit of the moment that we did on the neck, and you can just say, well, I'm just gonna just gonna sort of skim in a little bit of water here. And what this will do is it'll it'll blend the stripes that come down into the nose, it'll soften the stripes a little bit and it'll just give it a little bit of character should you want to put any character into play. It's totally up to you. Now I've painted those stripes very, very quickly, but you could take your time with them. You don't need to work as quick as me. I've done them for speed because I know people get bored watching videos. It's like watching paint dry for want of a better word. So I've kind of took a bit of time and done them relatively quickly. But I did, as I mentioned before, if we have a look at the sketch again, I've done them 
I sketched them in before. You could take a screen grab of that sketch and you could uh, sort of translate it into the the uh, picture. But what I'm going to do now is put some lovely highlights in, always the favourite thing to do, um, without a doubt. Again, if you want that little more detail, if you want to spend more time on these, this is very much a quick demo, then that's where you want to be doing one of my virtual watercolour workshops. They run pretty much every single weekend. As I'm live here on the 15th of uh February 2024 the website if we go back to the website just quickly while things dry off ready to put the final touches on and the final touches always make the difference so do stick around for that but if you go right to the top of the website all the w's watercolor.tv you'll see a big button that's flashing away that is the upcoming date the 25th of February the next one and again it's going to be a belter of a picture because what it's going to be the Norwegian fjords in watercolour. Imagine the beautiful mountains, the gorgeous estuaries, the lovely rustic buildings, the boats. That's the next one that we're doing and it's happening on the 25th of Feb. So do get yourself booked in. Links are in the description below. For everything we've spoke about, the materials, the watercolour TV membership is king here. So do make sure you check that out as well. Um, people often ask me how can they follow me and how can they work with me well, well the virtual workshops are great the demos are good I mean the demos are pretty quickly done if we're being honest but watercolor TV that is where you can really have dedicated Matthew Palmer watercolor time this here is my big life watercolor TV is what keeps me painting there's new content every single week on watercolor TV for members remember you can get a 30-day free trial let's get back to this then shall we because it's almost there now we've got some highlights on and how are we going to do highlights what we're going to do is use some white paint actually put a bit of white paint here and i'm after a little scrap piece of paper to put the white on because so i'm reaching down below the the desk here because it tends to get a little bit messy does white so i want to pop it on there and this will really change things now as far as the brush is concerned you might want to be using something really fine. So here is a Matthew Palmer branch and detail brush, um, which you can see here. If I get that close to the camera, so the camera will hopefully focus on it. Matthew Palmer branch and detail brush, small. This is like having a little pen in your hand. I'm going to use that. If we take a look at the palette, what you'll see is that I've actually got some white squirted on some paper. This is Matthew Palmer's liquid white just called white but it is a liquid white but any white paint gouache acrylic or something would be ideal for this and I'm going to take it on this beautiful detail brush this branching detail brush mold it into the brush there sort of run the brush over the edge so I've got a nice reservoir of white paint so I can put some detail in I might use the other brush as well and um, but I'll, I'll, it's a case of working on detail here and of course there's no better example of that than the eye so we're going to be adding some highlights to the eye there's a no-brainer look at that straight away you get that lovely bit of detail don't you put that in there and then a very thin line just creeping around the edge of the eye it puts a bit of life on it put a smaller dot there but look how that's just all of a sudden just come alive could also do a few slightly lighter lines kind of dry brush because i've actually wiped off the excess on the on the actual brush there and um, the brush on the tissue even sorry i'm just going to pop a few little little bits on here and even in the ears as well like having a pen in your hand this brush it's really nice to use get a little bit of white up the edge of those ears pick some more paint up should we need it but it will really make a difference putting this on these little tiny highlights are going to go a long way put some little bits of interest on a few more Yes. Look how that makes those ears pop, leap off the paper. 
beautiful. Same as in the main as well, I think we could actually just get a very subtle white line that just runs down the top of the, the neck, if you like, because that will separate the main from the the body and just pop a few little bits of white in there just to get a bit of detail down to the nose mouth area have some fun down here with this because you could really put that highlight around the nose there look how that pops all of a sudden when you do that beautiful little highlight right on the edge of the mouth gorgeous just going to do a second one of those just there so you can see that sort of lip if that's what you want to call it another one of those maybe just here as well this is this is just a nice quality opaque white paint a few wrinkles and creases in the stockings a few little almost like not whiskers but almost like kind of whiskery type edges which works really well i love that beautiful highlight in the eye what a big difference it makes let's kind of zoom back a little bit here so we're going to do this steady from the eye and look how that's brought that into life it's amazing what a difference those branch and detail brushes do actually do on a picture they're really nice to do and the great thing about white paint is if there's any area that you feel that you need to do a little bit of distortion on any blending you can just go you can just basically get a bit of water so i've got my number six brush here uh clean the brush on the tissue so it's just damp and literally i'm just going to go in now and just say well i just want to blend in a little bit of this soften a bit of that and give it a little bit of extra tonal work beautiful way of working this picture really needs a good if it's a vignette it wants a good signature don't it i want to sign it just here and I want to say a big thank you for watching. And I hope you enjoyed watching paint dry, folks, because that has made a beautiful, lovely watercolour picture. Thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed painting it. I hope you've enjoyed watching it as much as I've enjoyed painting it. So do, again, make sure you don't only subscribe to this channel, but make sure you subscribe to the new channel that will be started in the next few weeks. So do. Make sure you pop that subscribe button and hit the notification bell. And there is Mr. Zebra. Thank you for watching. I'll see you very, very soon. Let's take one last look at it. Take care. Beautiful.